Hey everybody, I'm Tarl Yarber with Big City Real Estate, and I'm here with my buddy Jan Wanat, and we're gonna be talking about house hacking! That's right, we're here with you today, here in Seattle, Washington. And this house that just got, that Jan just got finished with, he just moved into it. He's been house hacking this for a few months. Uh, we're gonna go over the before photos when you guys are watching this. We're gonna show you what it looks like now when that was finished. We're gonna talk about the numbers, how we went through the rehab. We're gonna show you all sorts of great stuff and how you could possibly house hack your own house, especially when you house hack a house that you actually love to live in and you actually make money on too. So Jan, before we walk this property and go in there, how much did you buy it for? What did you rehab it for? What did you get out of this thing? Tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, man. So I picked this thing up for 440, put in 170,000 into rehab, so about 610 on the cost basis. Yeah. And was hoping for a 675 appraisal. Well, we blew that out of the water and got up to 825. Jesus. So now we are actually pulling out uh closing next week and on a refinance $220,000 cash. And so that pays us back for the renovation costs. Yep. Plus we just earn an extra $50,000. Now the best part of BRRRS, uh, as you may know, is that that 50,000 is not taxed. Yeah. So you don't, I don't have to you know, share any, any so, of that with anyone. So he's living in this house, right? He basically fully remodeled it and to live in it, he got paid 50 grand of the equity into his own pocket. And you also rent out the bottom unit. Yeah, so we finished the basement and it's a nice little one bed, one bath, yep. and we get twelve hundred bucks for that. So your mortgage payment now is what? Thirty six hundred minus the twelve. So, you know, it's me and my girl and we pay twelve hundred a piece yep. to live in a place that, you know, we uh we got for zero dollars in and fifty grand back. <laughs> so we're gonna walk this property, it's gonna be awesome. Would you live in an eight hundred thousand dollar plus property that you only have to pay twenty four hundred dollars a month for, right? And you got fifty grand in your pocket by the time of it, and it's fully remodeled and you love it. So let's show you guys what it looks like. And as we go through it, if you're watching it, depending on when you're watching it, we're gonna edit in all those great photos so you can see what it'll look like before and also go all over the numbers and all the trials and tribulations you went through the remodel of this project. So come in, let's go check it out. Cool? Let's do it. All right. So first off, wait, hold on. Check out this freaking door. Yeah, so we wanted to keep the original character. You didn't of the buy house. this door at Home Depot. No, we okay. made so we made this custom door. Uh, you can see it's super thick. Yep, we but the that. reason we did this is because uh, we wanted to keep the original character. This is kind of an interesting shape. So all we did is slap some tongue and groove boards into this cool chevron pattern, stained it, uh, got some extra long bolts for the handles, and uh, now we're rocking and rolling. Sweet. Let's go check out the inside. So beforehand. This used to not look like this at all. This was a total, you know, messed up property, right? right. So, oh, look at all that, <laughs> it's beautiful. Even this, like you got the, the fireplace, the tile, all this stuff looks great. So it didn't look like this at all though, right? No, so we, uh, you know, what's hot now is the open concept. There was wall, there was a wall here, and there was a wall here. So we had this kind of odd, small room layout, we blew out all the walls and were able to get this nice open concept where we kind of have this great room with the kitchen, dining room, and living room all together. Perfect. And so what year was this house built? This was uh, 1930. 1930. So 1930's house. One of those. <laughs> mostly all new electrical now, all new plumbing. Fully, fully replumbed, fully uh, rewired, yep. and new HVAC system, new roof. I mean, literally all the systems new have windows. been. windows. Yes, 17 custom new windows. So everything's pretty much new. Everything's brand new. Yeah, cool. It's great. So, uh, brand new house, 800 plus thousand dollar ARV now. You live in it, you pay very little to live in it for Seattle. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, and you also got money in your pocket for it. Uh, how did you, you had to deal with this whole rehab? How much did the rehab cost you from start to finish? So it was about 170 and we're putting probably another 30 into this kick-ass backyard. Oh, we're yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. So quite a bit for the yard still, but overall, um, it doesn't matter because we got 100% of that money yeah. back. And so, it's just play uh, money now. yeah, and, and every dollar we put into it, we got obviously more than a dollar out of it yeah. because it pays for so, okay. so much more than we were expecting. So, cool. well, let's see the rest of the house. Uh, and so one of the cool things that I've always appreciated about you, Jan, is that you like unique tile. So go ahead and check out the tile work there. I think it's pretty cool. Hexagons, Hexagons. very hot right now. Same with the bottom, the flooring. Yeah, you got those. I would never pay for this for a flip, right? For me, but the fancy, fancy uh, mirror here, right? Yeah, with the, the Wi-Fi wi connection, yeah. But when you live in it, it's all good. You could do that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're flipping it, I would never do it. Right. So, or a burr, a traditional burr. 
Uh, and so you got that, so that's cool. So that was that bathroom always there? The bathroom was there, but it was an odd shape, right? So we basically took out everything and just uh, reframed it into standard square shapes. It was again kind of a zigzag, very awkward to use. And so I wanted to make it simple, a guest bath. We didn't want to take up too much space. And we kept both of the rooms here. Uh, so we have a guest bedroom with a queen bed, so guests can be comfortable. And then we have an office for, you know, me and my partners work here sometimes once a week. Yep. So that's nice to have, especially with COVID happening. Yep. Uh, nice to have a space to work from home. So, so you got two bedrooms, one bath on this side. You all, we'll check out the master, which you guys are going to love to see. The master's all the entire upstairs. Yep. So another bed and bath up there. So and then um, the basement is a one bedroom, one bath. Yeah, so it's a, it's a lot of beds and yeah. baths. We fit into yeah. 2,000 square feet, uh, five beds, three baths. Um, and, you know, this is comfortable for us to live in. Our, our unit's about 1,300 square feet, which is more than we had before. And, uh, and we were paying less than we were paying for a crappy apartment. So That's, that's crazy. <laughs> And so, uh, and then you also get rent for downstairs, which we'll, we'll talk to you guys about that here later in this video about the ADU that's downstairs uh, that you're also drawing rent from, which is super cool. Yeah. Right, there's a back thing. And we'll go up here later, but there's a surprise up there. <laughs> so it'll be cool. Many surprises. Many surprises. All right, so you guys, so this is kind of a custom little thing that most people don't do into their houses and stuff. This little bar that you had put in? Or? Yeah, so we, um, and big fan of the waterfall look. So yeah, it's expensive to, to put in all this extra stone. Um, cut it right and, and install it, but going for a specific look, it's my primary residence, I want to enjoy it for a couple yeah. of years, so yeah, um, maximize the kitchen layout, you know, there was, again, there was a wall here, we opened this all up, um, we still have, you know, a few things, we're, get, we're actually going to put more cabinets up on this side, it turns out we need more cabinet space, but overall just made the, the layout more functional and, you know, got new everything, gas stove, which is a, a pleasure nice. to use, I like so. It. So I know some people are already going to ask this right away, but like, who designed all this? Like, who designed all your finishes? Who figured out like that you should even open this stuff up? Did you hire an architect? Did you? What did you do? Yeah. So um, generally, I don't ever work with architects for rehabs. Um, I just draw my own floor plans and sketch up. In this case, I did have an architect um, make some recommendations on floor plan, and we went with most of their recommendations. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, finishes is is all me. It's just things that I'm liking at the moment, you know, and, and I don't worry too much about trying to, you know, make it perfect for an end buyer or anyone else. I just want it myself to enjoy it because this is going to turn into a rental in probably just about two years. I like to move a lot and, you know, do more house hacks. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I, I chose finishes myself that I knew I would enjoy. So if you're, if you're like me though, and you hate picking out finishes and don't like looking at any of this stuff personally, mm -hmm. any recommendations for people to like even know to what to, what, how's it all gonna match? I would've never picked any of this crap out because I don't, I don't know how. Sure, <laughs> so, sure. Believe it or not, even though you've seen some of our houses, they look great, I don't pick out any of it. So. Yeah, so yeah, I've, I've certainly worked with an in, uh, interior designer. Um, the best value for your money is if you can pay an interior designer to join you at a, a materials warehouse like um, you know CFM or, or floor decor, floor and decor, mm -hmm. and pay them you know a th I've paid a thousand bucks for a few hours of that time yeah. in basically selecting all the finishes for me, and that was on a five unit townhome project I managed for okay. another developer. So that's an option. Otherwise, you know, a great option is just go on Instagram, go on Pinterest, and copy exactly what professionals are doing. Yeah, and um, you know, and and. That way, you're not guessing on on finishes. I've seen, I've seen. I know we've done this before when I was starting out, but we we would go to the MLS and look at house flipped flips comps comps for houses that we were looking at that were done by other house flippers or whatever. Yeah, and we would literally just go steal their finishes. Totally, <laughs> totally. It. Like we we're like, all right, those are great life pictures. I guess we'll use those. Right? Yes, and then so also this, you spent 170 grand on rehab. Uh huh. All right, so 170 thousand dollar rehab. If you had to pay a thousand dollars to an interior designer to pick out all the finishes that's not even a half a percent. Like that's barely even right. a percent of that. I mean, at all of the entire transaction to do it. So a thousand bucks versus 170, it's probably just a drop in the bucket just totally. to it's done. Well uh, worth it. Well worth it. Cool. All right. I like it. So let's check out one of the best parts about the house. Besides, of course, the ADU downstairs, which we'll get into. It's your deck in your backyard. Yeah. So, you know, that was definitely a draw, a draw point for the house is we've got pretty sweet views of the cascades all along the back there uh, you can see downtown bellevue over there 
you can see uh, a little bit of downtown. You can certainly see the Space Needle, downtown Seattle. Um, yeah, we, we blew out this tiny deck we had before and, and now have this nice big one. So uh, definitely we'll be doing plenty of entertaining here. And as you can see, we've got uh, Check that plenty out, of work to do in the yard. So uh, with a fully sloped yard, not very functional, uh, had a landscape architect actually put this together, this design, and uh, we have some pretty sexy steel retaining walls yeah, going in. Up. So you have so those pilings. Can you zoom in at that at all, Alex? The pilings. Yeah. So those are solid steel. They're incredibly heavy. Uh, some of these panels, they don't look like it, but the heaviest ones are probably about 180, 200 pounds. Wow. So you know, we had three people to just to move those around. Uh, those are going to be welded on to the steel poles there. Uh, we're going to have some some drainage, and and then we're going to backfill, and and we're going to and that's going to rust into this kind of nice color. Uh, that looks like a lot of the wood in the house. Cool. So pretty excited about this. Yeah, custom fire pit, pergola, built-in seating, garden, parking, fruit trees, the whole uh, the whole shebang. So one, one of my, this, I love that you're doing this too, because one of my one of my favorite things about when we bought our house and stuff is, and when you know remodeling, you know fix and flip, or you know burrs, or you know any of that kind of stuff, is that when you're doing it for your own house, uh, one, you have the connections to get it done, right? Yeah. Uh, and then two, like you can actually like, move into the house, you finished everything you want it to be, and then you can actually put a ton of money into cool ass shit that you normally wouldn't do for right. a rental or a flip because you're gonna enjoy it, yeah, right? Totally. There's been plenty of houses I know I've done be like, man, it'd be really cool if we spent like 30 grand on the landscaping, but that's not gonna give us the value that we need out of it. Right. But if you're living in it, you can't, yeah, right? Totally. That's kind of the fun part about house hacking at times too. So uh, so let's let's keep checking this thing out. Yeah, please. The, uh, oh, before we do that, hold on. So what we're going to talk about, let's talk about the ADU downstairs, okay. right? Before we do that. Now, uh, we're not going to go down there right now because somebody lives down there. So we're not <laughs> going to go do that, but you're going to see plenty of footage, uh, but you have, you know, stairs down here. You have your ADU entrance comes from the front. Yep. Around the back. the back. Underneath the deck, there's an entrance to the ADU. So what's down there? How many square feet? What's it look like? Uh, yeah. Any issues that you had remodeling it? So uh, the biggest issue we had is there was a bad sewer line. Um, we tried to scope it, failed, so just budgeted mm -hmm. to fix it, right? So um, we did have to replace a significant portion of it. So, you know, it was a huge mess. If you remember, there was broken concrete everywhere. But once we got that fixed, I mean, the rest was pretty easy. Uh, finishing a basement is something I've done quite a few times. And uh, I always feel like it's a great value add. Yeah. You know, all you need is framing, insulation, drywall, flooring, paint, and some fixtures. And all the plumbing electrical. Yeah. Sure, and heat. sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to be hot. It, yeah, that's fine. A lot of that stuff was down there. Yeah, the good. bathroom was already down there, uh, right? So I didn't have to really re-plumb. Um, the electrical was already down there. That's cool. Sure, I added a, you know, a light fixture into a, into a new living space, but for the most part, uh, you really get a ton of value by finishing a basement. So now what we ended up with is about a 550, 600 square foot, one bedroom, one bath, got a small kitchen, it's got a, uh, a little living room, and then we share laundry. And yeah. so one of my contractors actually my, that worked on this house, great guy, him and his girlfriend moved in, they needed a new place to live. And so, uh, yeah, they pay for about a third of the mortgage and uh, are helping pay down our debt. And yeah. it, Feels great. <laughs> so they have, so you have a shared laundry down there. So you have an entrance up here to go down there. Correct. Which we'll, you guys will see that, uh, and then they have their own. But 600 square foot ish, right? How much are you getting for rent for that? 1,200, and I'm giving them a deal. So they just give it a deal. Okay, I love this. This is my favorite part when we do videos for Bigger Pockets is that we get a lot of view, live view viewers are from the center of the United States or Florida or wherever, uh, and you hear 1,200 bucks for a 600 square foot basement, basement unit, yeah. and you're like, you people are insane. Yes. Yes, Seattle is insane right now for a lot of reasons, but it's yeah. also insane because we do have a lot of high rents here. Right. So, but take advantage of them if you live here. Like if you lived in the middle of the U.S., right, then it probably wouldn't be twelve hundred bucks to live there, but it would be relative to the value of the house and rents and all that kind sure. of stuff too. So, I do think we yeah. could probably get fourteen fifty for it, but uh, my guy comes and helps. He was the one that delivered the steel wall, so he mm -hmm. comes and helps do labor, and and so it's just a pleasure to have him because he's an honest, good, hardworking guy. Good tenants. Yeah, and a great tenant. You know, he's mostly working, so yeah. he just yeah. sleeps there. Yeah, that's the best kind. Yeah, <laughs> you absolutely. don't have to worry about it. And if something breaks, they can fix it. Exactly. So, even better, right? So, cool stuff. ADU down below. You own the top two units, right? Which I love. Art Tires have the top portion of it. So, let's go check out the coolest part, which is the upstairs master. Yes. Right? Let's do it. Is, I like this. I would love to live in the upstairs. <laughs> and then we'll go over all the numbers for everybody watching this. 
We're gonna go over all the numbers. We're gonna go over how the refinance stuff works, all the uh, how the cash out portion of it works. Answer any questions at the end that you might have as well, uh, and we'll go through all that here shortly. Once we're done, welcome to South Park. All right, so Seattle. So the funny part. So Alex, point to that house right there. So you guys see that house? Cool. Two years ago, I flipped that house. That's what's kind of fun about yep. this. And we had a stairway kind of similar to this. We just removed the door. Okay. Right? What made you keep the door here? Um, we actually uh, wanted a some kind of a separation between the master suite because we took out the door uh, to the bedroom up there. Yeah. And so we wanted some separation. So we actually had to build this custom. You can see how tall and skinny yeah, it is, yes. kind of like Carl and I. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we had to build this custom door. So we had some separation between the spaces. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And you got this whole house permitted, right? Yes, fully okay. permitted. So the, uh, just a second. Uh, so a question for me is that, and maybe I'm calling you out, but the from my past is that having a door at the bottom of the stairs, most cities don't like that because if you fall down the stairs, you hit the door. Unless yeah. it's like a landing portion of it. I could see that. And they- oh, was a grandfathered in in care in Seattle. Right? They didn't say anything about it. So um, part of that is perhaps because I am a homeowner. They go a little easier on you if you're not uh, just doing a well, those crooked house flippers. Yeah, yeah those- <laughs> This past year is making money. Uh, the but actually, so so this is the reason why I brought it up is that it has a lot to for people watching this. Always know your jurisdiction and what they're requiring for code because in Seattle they know that this is a 1930 house. There's a lot of stuff in it that isn't to date now that they're okay with leaving. They'll grandfather right. in. There's other cities in our Pacific Northwest area that don't care how old the house is, they want you to upgrade it to 2018, 2019, 2020 standard. Right. Right. So never take for granted what you hear on YouTube as gospel for everything. Know your specific cities, your specific jurisdictions for any kind of permitting or anything like that. Uh, don't just trust what we say. Right. And honestly, a big part of it too is kind of the luck of the draw. How good of a day is the inspector yeah, having totally. when totally. they come and meet you, right? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're always like, bitching to them about, oh, why you make me do that? Why you make me do this? And they're gonna just bitch at you and we'll give you right. all sorts of great things to do. So you chose, first off, you're one of the few people that I've met a long time that put wallpaper in their house, so. Yeah, um, yeah, you know, uh, we did kind of a fun forest theme master bedroom. Yeah. So Pacific Northwest vibes here. We got some cool metal wall art. You know, this kind of looks like a tree trunk, the mirror. Um, yeah, I still have actually a lot of custom woodwork to do here to really finish off my uh, my forest thing, yeah, but yeah. pretty stoked on it so far. Dope. So we're going to do the bathroom last because I think that's the coolest thing, but you guys can see that. But this is nice. Did, this wasn't, was this always vaulted? Uh, this was vaulted, yes. And we added a, a cool light fixture. Kind of looks like a like a tree branch. Yeah, got the halogen bulbs in there. We The, the only changes we made here are where, you're, where I'm standing is where the door was, right? So there was a hallway with the door. Well, I like a lot of natural light. So we blew out all these walls here. And now we have these the big windows with a view of the mountains right from the bed, which we like. And then the other changes we made here are added a huge window there to kind of highlight the, the cool space. Yeah. And then we built in this uh, little walk-in closet. So that way we have uh, storage space and um, Got the fun little barn door. We all right. Well, let's check out the bathroom. Yes. So, was there a bathroom up here before? There was not. This was a bedroom. An awkward little bedroom turned into a pretty sweet master bath. Ta da! So, would you guys like this bathroom? And would you do this in a house flip? Sometimes, maybe. Actually, <laughs> depending on the market. I uh, for I would do this in a higher end house flip. I would. Yeah. Um, while it, I try to make it look high end, I. Um, I was I still am budget conscious with everything I do. Let's go so shower yeah, plenty of space in the shower. Okay, this is the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I don't have to break my neck to take a shower. I can just stand underneath it. It's an awesome feeling. We have meetings. Yeah, you can sit good. down. You know, get your laptop out and yep. do what yeah. you got to do. <laughs> sit in the bathtub. I like that too. So this is cool. So definitely, this part a lot of people liked was. Did you add the lights yourself? To yes, this yes, I, I'm obsessed with the LED backlighting. I just think it creates a nice ambient light. 
I, I still believe it's the highest single value item you can put in a rehab. The light strip cost me $12 and it just creates a kind of an ambient light that looks like a million bucks. I love it. So 12 bucks, you know, and, and you really get a, get a great vibe from it. So, so I, you, you, this is a basic mirror. So people understand you can buy mirrors that have lights on the back, but this is a basic mirror yep. that you had cut, right? Which is a big ass mirror, right. right? But then you had it floated out with some sort of like framing thing mm -hmm. or something on the back. And then he, he has these $12 little LED lights that you just basically glued to the back of it all the way around and there's a switch right here. Yep, right. it takes five minutes and uh, really adds a cool yeah. idea. So. so that's just cool because this would probably cost five, six hundred bucks or whatever if you wanted it done. Ah, uh, twelve hundred. Twelve hundred, yeah, right? honestly, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. One. yeah. So instead you spend two, three hundred bucks for the mirror and twelve bucks for the thing, yep. right? And so I guess the value there if you're doing a flip or something is you can do it with smaller mirrors, mm -hmm. right? And you're spending 12 bucks for the LED, but it's that wow factor, right? So uh, it's, a lot of flips might look bland, but if you do something like cool wow factor, like that's a cheap wow factor. Totally. Like that, people are like, I love it. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I only see that at the Hyatt Regency. Right, 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 so right. Four seasons. So dope. All right. Well, what else? Anything cool else cool about this house you want to talk about besides the numbers, which we're going to get into here in a second? Um, Any major issues you had when you did this property? Not really. I mean, I've done quite a few renovations. You know, the biggest uh, kind of open-ended piece was we couldn't scope the sewer, so I budgeted 10 grand to replace the sewer, right? But beyond that, I mean, um, this sat on the market for quite, quite a while because it was first overpriced, and once they got to a reasonable price, um, I was the first one to get an offer in after 90 days, right after they dropped it. Um, you know, this house did have a foundation issue. Uh, the whole house set, has settled a little bit. But that doesn't scare me because I know that foundation issues are typically a symptom of a different problem, in most cases water problem. Mm -hmm. So what we did is install French drains along the sides of the house to continue having the water move down the hill and prevent further you know, kind of movement. You could also stabilize the foundation with some pin piles, mm -hmm. but generally um, I you know if you can find if you can find a house with problems that's keeping other people away, you're going to have less competition as long as you can wrap your head around those problems and take care of them. Yeah, and have the connections and research for it. So there's right. there's a, uh, and foundation issues can scare a lot of people away, totally. right? Yeah. But a lot of times you get a foundation, here's the thing, you'll get a foundation company out and they'll say that's 80 grand to fix. You get a different one out, they'll say it's 10 grand to fix. Right. Like it just, it's all depends on how far they go with what they want to do. Do you sure. want something that will never move ever with a level 10 you know, earthquake? Or do you want something that you have a hundred year old house and it just needs to be stabilized? Right. So like, this is the thing, right? So I love it. But, uh, so besides, so any quick advice you can give people that want to house hack their first house, uh, that would be something that you would advise as far as like warning things, things that they should look out for, sure. uh, as a basic house hack. Yeah. And the biggest tip I have for you guys, and I teach this to, to, to my clients or students, um, find a property that you can basically find a multifamily property at a single family price. How do you do that? Find one that has a basement you can finish, a garage with electrical and you know maybe easy access to plumbing and sewage so you can finish a garage into a second unit or you know find single uh, single family homes on multifamily land where you can build more units. So um, looking for traditional house hacks that everyone wants, a duplex, triplex, fourplex, well, everyone's looking for that, right? Yeah. So you just have to change your your way to look at this and look for a space that can become two or three units, not necessarily is, yeah. right? You have to have a little vision, but I mean, it's a simple search. On Redfin, you can check a little box that, say, that says must have basement, finished or unfinished. I mean, yeah. anyone can look for this. So I really advise folks to find um, well, maybe I should stop because I want more of these houses. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't really watch them from Seattle. That's, <laughs> that, that's the easiest way, honestly. F find something you can turn into a multifamily. Love it. That's uh, good advice. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's go check out the numbers, and we're gonna wrap up and answer any questions you guys have uh, from that. So let's zoom on downstairs. Cool. All right. Real basic numbers. First off, purchase. What did you buy it for? We'll call it 440. I actually also got a $6,000 credit. So technically 434, but let's keep it simple, 440. 430, 440, mm -hmm. got it. So you bought it for 440, you bought it on the MLS. Correct. Right, sitting on the market for a long time. Yep. Scared a bunch of people away. Yep. Maybe a traditional house flipper might not buy it because it's too tight a margin. You planned on living in it, right? Dope, praise for way more any house flipper would just do backflips on or burr -er 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 right. person, buy rehab rent, refinance repeat, but you live in it. You got a lot of good benefit from that. But rehab. 170. 
$170,000. Which is a lot, but you got you have to remember that I I went with higher fin higher end finishes than I would in a flip because yep. it's my house. And um, I basically have a new house, so it's about 2,000 square feet. So you can say you can see that that is quite a lot of money on a per square foot basis. We're at what, 90 bucks a square foot, or so? Yeah, 85 dollars a square foot, which is again expensive. But this is Seattle. Labor is expensive. Materials are expensive. It's all good. And so that's where we It's all up. relative based on where you live. Right. So, all right, we have that. Uh, the there's other crap. Like, how did you finance the front end? Uh, so we got to, if you can imagine this, we actually were able to get conventional financing. Because it this. was livable when you bought it. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it had a hole in the, in the ceiling with water coming out. I was kind of amazed that it appraised mm -hmm. uh, with conventional financing, but that allowed us to save a lot of money on upfront costs because I didn't have to get a hard money loan. So, so you were buying it as a primary resident. Yep. Only had to put down. So you would conventional mortgage. Mm -hmm, for just the purchase. And so our down payment was $24,000. So you put $24,000 down. Yep. At? Closing. No, no, uh, rate? Oh, at 3.95%. Jesus, right? You guys can read that, I'm sure. All right, so <laughs> 3.95%. Our camera guy's loving this. The, uh, we usually have a bigger market. Uh, so you got 3.95% interest rate on a house that you had to fully remodel. I pay eight to ten percent interest on my flips, right? right? Uh, some people pay twelve to fourteen percent. Like it just depends. I would love to pay four percent interest rate on a house that I flip or rent out or whatever, right? Yeah. But because this is a primary house hacking, one of the major benefits, especially if you can buy it that way, which is awesome. Love it. Mm -hmm. Great. So the rehab though, how did you did you fund that out of pocket or did you? Yeah, try to cash. Save it you know, so I've been investing for a little bit. I have a little bit of cash saved up now, so mm -hmm. we are we are able to again save money on financing by. Um, just going ahead and pay, paying cash here. However, there are great conventional mortgages. There's obviously hard money. Uh, with conventional, there's a you know 203k, or that's an yep. FHA loan. There's home style renovation. They'll give you the purchase plus renovation all in one loan, and still your down payment. If we did that, would have been very similar to this. Yeah. So maybe 30, 35, if we wanted to get a conventional mortgage at this, with again a little bit higher rate for those products. But so there's more options. You could still borrow from the private lender or hard money lender or other people to be able to get a second on it, or you can do the conventional aspects. So there's a lot of ways to do that. Yeah. We're not lenders per se. Right. But all right, so you got all that in. So 171 afford uh, that, whatever so that is that is uh six hundred ten thousand dollars plus holding costs, right? How many months did it take you to do this project? Oh, it took us four months. So four months. And our monthly payment was twenty seven hundred dollars. Uh, so, you know, plus utility. So call it three grand a month yep. for holding so costs. 12 grand ish. 12 grand. So we'll, we're not HGTV. We're not lying on those numbers, but we're not going to do all that math right here. So he's got holding costs, yeah. right? You got all that stuff in. Great. You originally, when we did this, you thought it might praise for 675. That was my, that was my goal actually. Yeah. And then you'd have to have private mortgage insurance too, probably okay. and some other stuff, because here's something that we also, you also know about house hacking. When it's a rental, you can only get 75 to 80% maybe of the LTV, sometimes 70, depends on what it is. 70 to 75, I've never heard of 80% on a rental. There's, there's 100%, there's 80% ones. Oh, really? Like, yes. So, right, so, okay. Portfolio loans. Now, if you okay. do your conventional Fannie Freddie, 75%. 75, yeah. Right? There are portfolio loans out there from credit unions that'll do 80%. So, okay. uh, but we're not here to talk about all that stuff. <laughs> that said, 70, 75 is traditional, right? right for the most part. Uh, but when you live in it, you can get 95%, yeah, right? You can because get more. it's conventional. So, but you're going to pay private mortgage insurance for that. But if you have a 670, the original ARV was 670,000, was what you bought it for projected wise, right? Yeah. So I was hoping, yeah, I was hoping to get this as an yeah. ARV. And then you do 95% LTV, get whatever that is, right? Or it'll have to leave some money in. I was probably going to have to leave some money in. I was projecting for about. $40,000 left in the property, right. which isn't bad because I'm getting a cool house to live in, right? So, and it appraised for $825,000. It appraised for $825,000, which is a happy day. Very happy. Very and happy. we got an 80% loan. 80% of this value is a new loan, right? So, whatever 80% of 825 is, 618, I believe, okay. is our new loan amount. So, now we 
get back. So what happens as soon as you get the refinance is you get this new amount, 618, and the first thing that happens is they pay off your old debt, right? They pay off the existing mortgage. So the existing mortgage I think was, uh, well, 440 minus 24. So to four, oh, sorry, four, six, 16. 416 is my original mortgage. Yeah, four, so first we, right, so yeah, whatever. they pay off, so 618 is the new loan, they pay off the 416, so what's left? About 200. 200 grand. Yeah. So now we get that 200 grand to us. It's yeah. actually, these numbers are slightly off, but we're getting $220,000 back. Got it. Right? So what, what do we do with that 220,000? Well, we reimburse ourselves for this renovation cost that we spent. Cash out. Right? Yep. We get our holding costs back. We get our, our down payment back and we get some extra money on top of that. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah. Now, and then at the end of it, you are, and we'll verbalize this, your rent, you, your mortgage payment is thirty six hundred dollars a month, yep. including taxes and insurance, including right? everything. Yep, including all in. You're getting twelve hundred for the unit. Yep. So you're left with twenty four hundred bucks a month, right? For a dope ass place, that and in Seattle, twenty four hundred dollar a month mortgage for an eight hundred thousand dollar house. It's pretty good. <laughs> so it's I'll take good. it. Right, you'll take it. Cool. All right, let's see. Any more numbers you want to add to this? That's that's pretty much it. You know, I try to keep it simple for you guys. Um, yeah, just know your ARV, right? Know your ARV is the most important part. You didn't though. <laughs> I, am, I am conservative. <laughs> I like these surprises, right? I hate getting surprised in the other way. So I'm conservative every time because I don't like negative surprises. So if you guys have any questions, now's the time to ask. Uh, the, we already answered some of these, but we'll do that. So timeline start to finish, you said about four months from months. rehab, yep. right? which is good. And that comes from Joseph. Uh, the now. I can't pronounce your name, forgive me. Uh, who designs all these things? We went through that already. Yeah, Jeez. so myself, an architect help with floor plans and you know Instagram and Pinterest ideas. Uh, okay, one thing, so Joe Har is asking, I've been looking to make a single family house into a house hack with an ADU, but it's against zoning regulations in my area, right, for, for where you are specifically, I'm guessing, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for that with an ADU, what do you do? And you can't do it in your area? Uh, you can still do a house hack with a separate unit, but now you can just have roommates instead of tenants mm -hmm. effectively. You know, you don't, I don't have, like here, I have connection to these two units. So that isn't necessarily a completely separate unit, right? I can access their unit. Now, if it's completely separate, now you might start running into some issues, right? Yeah. But um, if you have a kitchenette without a stove, um, and then maybe they add a stove later, who knows? But you can still rent that and have roommates, right? You don't have to have just completely separate tenants. So you can still do a house hack. Love it, okay, that works too. So it's all it's all a game, right? You gotta figure it out for what it is. Yeah, um, and you know, provide, provide safe, up to code housing, but generally, you know, you do what you gotta do to, to make your investment work. Love it, okay. So we don't have a lot of questions. We never usually get a lot of questions when we do walk through because nobody knows what questions to ask. So, <laughs> uh, or we already answered them all and to go through it while we're through it. So, uh, so those are the numbers. Thank you guys for joining us again, once again, with Bigger Pockets. Uh, I'm Tali Yarbrough with Fixated Real Estate. Definitely comment, like, subscribe as much as you guys can on this video. We'll go back and answer any questions that you guys might later add on the replay. Uh, if you want to get a hold of Jan, Jan, how do they get a hold of you? Facebook. Yeah, I've got a Facebook group called Washington Real Estate Investing. If you want to learn more about the market here, join the Facebook group. It's a very active Facebook group. And you spell your last name how? W-A-N-O-T. And you can look them up on Facebook. J A N. W A O N O A W A N O T. Right? <laughs> Jan Wanat, right? It's not Jan. No, I'm <laughs> but because you're it doesn't matter. European. Uh, so you check them out there. You can follow us on Instagram, and we'll see you guys next week on our next live.